evening once again. Amen. As we come on in to, to our Bible study tonight, amen. I want to thank God for another opportunity uh, to bring the Word of God uh, to you uh, on tonight. Thank God for your presence. Come right on in. Welcome to our Bible study on this wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. Amen. Thank God for your presence. We're so grateful to God that you're here and you're there and I'm here. Amen. And we're just grateful that the Lord will allow us or has allowed us an opportunity to share together. Look forward uh, in these last few uh, weeks. have been looking forward to uh, sharing uh, on Wednesday nights uh, with you and, and as well as on Sunday mornings. And I pray that uh, these uh, times that we are together, connecting together, that uh, they are a blessing to you and to your household. Uh, certainly, I've been in prayer uh, for the church and all the members, uh, praying that the Lord will keep his hand upon us uh, as we go through this uh, phase one of our pandemic. And uh, we're just grateful to God for being able to share and being a part of uh, your lives as well as you are part of our lives. Amen. I just want to thank God for you and praise God uh, for your being, being with us on, on tonight. Amen. Now, if you have your Bibles, I will be uh, coming from uh, the book of Ephesians, uh, beginning at chapter 2, uh, Ephesians chapter 2. I want to look at a few of uh, those verses in Ephesians chapter 2, and tonight's uh, lesson subject is from trash to treasure. Amen. From trash to treasure. That's the topic of our little discussion uh, tonight um, that we will be talking about. Amen. Amen. All right. But before we get started, we want to offer a word of prayer, uh, praying for the St. Mary Baptist Church family that the Lord will continue to, to keep his hands of mercy upon us. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we want to thank you now for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, we thank you that you have been amazing throughout this process. Lord, you have kept your hands of protection. You've kept your eyes upon us. And it's not because we are worthy, not because we have been so great and so good, but because you're just a good God. And we just thank you for your blessings, oh God. Thank you for how you've kept the members of St. Mary together. Thank you that you've kept them safe from harm and danger. Lord, I pray now that you would continue to hold us in the hollow of your hand. Father, we need you and we can't make it without you. I pray for those, oh God, that are suffering right now throughout this land those who've lost jobs and lost loved ones. God, I pray that you would continue to hold them in your hand. Continue, Lord, and bless their lives. Let them know, God, that you're still God. You are still on the throne and you have, you have all power in your hand. Father, we thank you now. We ask you open up our minds and our hearts to your word that we might be better people and that it might come out in our daily living. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. Amen. As I said, uh, our scripture lesson tonight will be coming from Ephesians chapter 2. And in Ephesians chapter 2, there's a whole lot of information in there. But I want to start off by causing you or to remember or cause to remember uh, an old saying that uh, goes something like this. Uh, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Amen. And that is a true saying because what one person considers to be trash to somebody else, it can be treasure. And this lesson tonight comes off of the heels of just, just observation. Uh, one day I was... Um, riding around uh, here in the city. And I happened to notice a man who was digging in the trash. He was digging in the trash and he had his little, little pea picker and, and he was going through the cat trash 
uh, looking for, for, for cans, it appeared to be, looking for old cans. And he would find one can and he'd pull it out and he'd find two cans and he'd rumble some more and he'd find another one. And, and then I watched him and every time he pulled out a can, he would smile and he would put it in his bag. And I said, well, why? You know, in my mind, I said, well, I know he's looking for, for cans so that he can sell it. And I said, and something said to me, he's looking for, he's looking in the trash for treasure. And that is, that is, that is a, the, the, the image of God himself, of God himself. God, who is the God of all ages, God of the universe, is looking in the trash for treasure. And I tell you, my brothers and sisters, I submit to you that you and I were in the trash of the world. We were in the trash just being there. But somehow, some way, God in his plan decided that he would send his son, him, send himself in the person of his son. And that is Jesus Christ. And Jesus comes looking in the trash. Our world was trash. It was trash. Sin was everywhere. And my brothers and sisters, Jesus comes looking in the trash for some treasure. And, and you and I are in the trash. As I say, you and I are in the trash of sin. But Jesus came looking in this world, for in, looking at trash, and when he found us, we were in the trash, as it were, when he found us. That's where we were. We were in the trash. And it takes a lifetime for him to get the trash out of us. It don't take him long to get us out of the trash, but there is trash in us that he has to work on. Even though he's rescued us and delivered us out of the trash heap of life, he has to get the trash out of us. And I know some of us might think, well, I ain't trash. I ain't no trash. Yes, we may not necessarily be trash in that sense, but some of us have some trashy ways. <laughs> some of us have some trashy thoughts. Some of us have some trashy attitudes. And God, even though he's taken us out of the trash, he's got to get those attitudes and those ways and those thoughts out of us. God is able to do that. And sometimes that takes a lifetime. That's a, a daily walk with the Lord. Because I didn't get cleaned up overnight. God had to work on me and he's working on you and I. And there are many examples in the Bible in which God pulls people out of the trash. Number one, I saw in scripture, and you know the story, the, the woman caught in adultery. She had some trashy way. Yes, she was guilty. She shown up was guilty. As a matter of fact, the scripture said that she was caught in the very act of adultery. She had some trashy ways. But Jesus picked her up out of the trash. Now, you and I wouldn't have selected a woman like that to be a part of our group, but Jesus is looking for trash so that he can turn it in to treasure. Not only the woman that was caught in adultery, but also the woman at the well. She too was a trashy woman. She was a trashy woman. Jesus had told her, go find your husband, or go call your husband. She said, I ain't got no husband. You say, yeah, you, you're right. <laughs> you don't have a husband. You've had five. You've been living a trashy life. But now, and the one you have now, he's not your husband. That's still trashy. But Jesus said, don't matter. I'm not worried about that. I'm here to pull you out of the trash. Amen. And ain't that a, ain't that a blessing that God comes where we are? He comes to us where we are in the situation we may be in because God can handle the situation that we're in. He can handle trashy situations. But not only 
not only just the woman that's caught in adultery, not only the woman at the well, but Lazarus. Lazarus was in the trash. Matter of fact, Lazarus had gone to the trash dump. He was in the cemetery. You know, you heard the story. He was in the cemetery and had been there for four days. But Jesus comes along. Even though he was in a trashy, stinky situation, Jesus comes along and says, Lazarus, come forth, and pulls him out of that trash can situation and gives him eternal life. And that's the point I wanted to try to make in Ephesians. It says, and you have he quickened, which means made alive, who were dead in trespass and sins, where in time past you walk, not just you, but we walk according to the course of this world. Any way the wind blew, that's how we went. According to the prince and power of the air, and that's Satan himself. Whatever Satan told us to do, if it felt good to us, we did that. And the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, the same spirit that works in those who are children of disobedience. That once at one time was us. Who among, among whom also we had our conversation. Among them same people, it says we had our conversation. That's not talking about conversation like you talk to somebody, but that's conversation in terms of behavior. We acted just like they acted. We cussed just like they cussed. We told folks a piece of our mind just like they did. That's how we were. That's how we were in time past. We walked in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Whatever came on their mind, your mind, my mind, if, if I felt like telling you, you got told. <laughs> and you look at what it is to say. It says, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And you know, sometimes I think that we who are on the Lord's side and are Christian, sometimes we forget where we come from. We forget that, you know, we were at one time out there. We was one time in the trash. We was one time the one doing all the cussing and all the fussing and raising all the sand. And, and now that we've gotten in the Lord's house, and that's a good thing, now we, we, we've forgotten where we've come from. But look at verse four. It says, but God who is rich in mercy and for his great love wherein he loved us. God who is rich in mercy has plenty of mercy and he has mercy on those who don't deserve any mercy. Verse five says, and even when we were dead in sin, he quickened us. That means made us alive by pulling us out of the trash can of life and, and placing us together with Christ for by grace are you saved. It is by the grace of God, only the grace of God. Paul said, I am that I am by the grace of God. Look at what he says. He said, and had raised us up. He pulls us out and he raises us up together and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God takes trash and turns it into treasure. He does that. I want to talk about the woman uh, that was caught in adultery. I talked about the woman at the well. I talked about him pulling Lazarus up out of the grave. And also there was one more man. There are plenty of others, but just another one was Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was hated by all of his kinsmen. He was a short man of short stature. But one day, Jesus stopped by that tree he had climbed up. And even though his trash, trash was up in a tree, some folk think it's because they trash ain't on the ground with everything, everybody else. Theirs is a little bit better. But trash is trash no matter where it's at. If it's up a tree, on the ground, or wherever it is, trash is still trash. And we all was that. 
We, that's where we were. That's where he found us. That's where we were when, we, when, we, when he found us. He came looking for us in the trash. He was looking for, for trash to make treasure out of it. And, uh, you know, that's the way where God has brought us. And he's taken us out of the trash can. And he has placed us in heavenly places made us to sit together. That means you and I are sitting together. We know where we come from, but we ought to know where we ought not forget where we come from, where we used to be. The old us, the old person we used to be. God has taken us out of the trash and made us all sit together. And we are sitting together in heavenly places through Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, I know that you probably are wondering. I know you see these glasses that are sitting here. And, and of course, you know, Pastor Love illustration. And to look at these glasses, beautiful set of glasses. I, these glasses are, are very, very, very pure. It got the gold trim at the top. Uh, but they don't look like where they came from. These glasses don't look like where they came from. Yes, beloved, they were found in the trash. They were found in the trash. Came up on them one day and I saw some beautiful glasses. They had, now they didn't look like this when I saw them. They had, not, they had dirt on them. They had dirt in them. But I pulled them out of the trash. And when I pulled them out the trash, they weren't ready to be used yet. No, they, they, I pulled them out the trash, but they still had some trash on them and they had some trash in them. But in order to get them to the point to where they could be used, I had to wash them. And I'm so glad that his blood, the blood of Jesus, washes us from our sin. Yes, I had to bring them home put them in some hot water and, and rinse them out, put some soap in there and scrub. Some of them had some, some, some real stuff that had got caked in on them. And sometimes God got to do us like that because some of us got some trash still stuck on us. And God got to do some extra cleaning to get us to where he wants us to be. And once, once I finished with them and cleaned them up, now they are ready to, to be used. They are, and whenever I get ready, whenever I want some orange juice or whenever I want a glass of milk, I got a container that is able to handle whatever I pour in. Now, these glasses, as I said, don't look like where they come from. Now, here's the key. These glasses can't boast and brag and, and, and lift themselves up one over the other and say, I'm better than you because I'm, I'm, I'm cleaner or I'm, I'm this. No, you all came from the same place. So I can't brag. I can't boast. I can't do nothing. All I can do is give God the praise and say, thank you, Lord, for finding me in the trash. And that's what this lesson is all about. God has found us. He has delivered us, pulled us out of the trash, and he's cleaning us up. He is daily clean as we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. He's cleaning us up, taking all that trash that was, that was on us and in us, taking all of that out of us so that we can be used by him. And that's the whole purpose. God wants to use your life. Now, if you're not in the family of God, maybe you still find yourself in the trash of life and God has not come by in your estimation and rescued you. I'm telling you, he's knocking at your door. He's knocking at your door. And if you would just let him in and say, Lord, I know I'm trash. I'm not worth anything. But God has a way of taking that which is not worth anything and making it valuable. Yes, I saw this, this set in the trash. And I tell you, 
I, you know, and from God's perspective, I, I, I wanted to use them. I saw them. They were headed for, for, for direct destruction. Had they been left there in the trash, they would have been destroyed. And that's what God says to us, that had he left us in our sinful condition, we would have been destroyed. But because he had enough love in his heart, he sent himself in the person of his son to die on a cross for you and I, that he might rescue us from the power of the trash pile and then set us in heavenly places. Now these glasses that were going to be destroyed, now they set in a display case, waiting to be used. And that's what God wanted. When he cleans us up, we ought to be willing and ready. Whenever he gets ready to use us, we ought to be willing to serve, willing to let God serve us. Have you been clean today? Have you been clean? Have you come out of the trash pile? And is God using your life? You can start right where you are. Right where you are. You ain't got to know a whole lot about the Bible. You can just tell folk that I was in the trash. I was in the trash. And he came by just at the right time. Came by and pulled me out the trash. And then after he pulled me out the trash, he had to get the trash out of me. And every day he's working on me. Every day, he's cleaning me up. Every day, he's polishing me up. Every day, he's working on me because he has a plan and a purpose for my life. And that plan is for him to use me whenever he gets ready. The old folk, you sang that song, Use me, Lord, in your service. Draw me nearer every day. I'll be willing, Lord, to run all the way. Amen. God bless your hearts. God bless you tonight. So glad. I pray that you got a thought out of that lesson. Uh, again, I want to remind those of you that are, are going to be coming to the church Saturday uh, from uh, 12 until 1.30. Uh, we'll be passing out our uh, communion packets. You can get enough for your families. Uh, make sure you come by 12 to 1.30. We will be at the church and we will take communion on Sunday morning, we will be there taking communion together. Amen. This is, God has worked this thing out to where we still can be connected to one another, even though we can't see one another face to face. And so I just want to bless you in the name of the Lord. And I pray God's blessing upon you. And I pray that you got a thought out of this lesson tonight. Uh, I want you to know we are praying for you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. Share this uh, message, share this lesson with others so that they may, they, you, they may need to hear what, what has been explained here tonight. Amen. I want you to know God loves you. He's not left us. He's not just turned his back on us, but he loves us. And he is going to, even in the midst of all this pandemic, this trash that we're in, he's going to reach down and he's going to deliver us from this situation. Amen. But God wants us to be used by him. He wants us to be, be used in his service. Amen. So until next time, I, I do I want to let you know that uh, if you are looking to get a Sunday school book uh, from our Sunday school that's still going on up until June, we will be passing those out as well. For those who'd like to have a Sunday school book, uh, we will be passing those out on Saturday. Uh, between 1, 12 and 1.30. Amen. God bless you so much. Uh, I want to thank all of you for, for your gifts uh, to the church. Uh, I understand that the church is still moving on. We're doing okay. Amen. And, and it's only because of your obedience to God, not because pastor said you got to do it. No, it's your obedience to God. And as you obey God, God rewards uh, obedience for obedience is better than sacrifice and so I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing yourselves to be used by God and your gifts and your talents uh, for, for the Lord amen that's what it's all about amen it's about reaching and, and you know now 
that we're in this situation. God has blessed St. Mary in such a unique way that we're not just on Kenneth Avenue anymore, but we are now worldwide. There are people listening to us all over the world. Amen. And thank God for that. And we appreciate that. Let us know if you're listening from other cities and other areas of town or wherever, let us know. And we are grateful that you are chose to, to listen uh, and watch uh, our, our services and our broadcast. Amen. Well, my time is almost up and I just thank God for you. You know, I talk all night long. Amen. I want to thank God for, for the men. Amen. Uncle Don said that he was responding. He, so he was speaking for the men, but I need to hear from the other men of St. Mary. Amen. Let me know that you're, you're standing in there. I know you're, you're there, Uncle Don. Uh, Brother Montgomery, I know you're there. Uh, amen. But let me hear from some of you others. Amen. Let me know that you're listening and you and it's being a blessing in your life. Amen. Well, until Sunday morning at 1130, we will see you then. May God's richest blessing be upon you. God bless you.